A useful concept in quantum mechanical operators is that called commutation, commutation of operators. Let's just see what we mean by that. It's very similar to the commutation uh, rule when we talked about algebra. So commutation of operators is where you take um, an operator B and operate on the function and you get another function, then you operate with uh, another operator A. And what you do uh, is reverse the order of operation. Here you operate on A first, then the resulting function is operated on by B. And if you say, if you find that it doesn't matter whether you first do B then A, or whether you do A then B, if you get the same function after those two operations, then you say the two operators commute. If, on the other hand, it makes a difference which operator you take first, then you say the uh, operators do not commute. There's non-commutation of operators. Notation for this is brackets uh, the operator A, B, and that is equal to zero if the operators commute, and it's not equal to zero if the operators do not commute, where the brackets indicate uh, operate first on with B then A and then subtract the result from A then B and if it doesn't make a difference whether you do B then A or A then B then this result will be equal to zero and there'll be uh, the operators will commute if on the other hand this does make a difference um, and therefore if uh, you get a different function when you subtract the two results you will not get zero and you say the operators do not commute all right, we'll see in a minute why this is important. But let's take some examples first. Let's look at the operators for kinetic energy and for momentum in the x direction. We'll show that these operators commute. And let's just show that. So the kinetic energy operator, we know by now, is minus um, h bar squared over 2m second derivative. And the momentum operator, this is in just one dimension in the x direction, the momentum operator is just minus i h bar first derivative with respect to x. Now, let's see if they commute. In other words, let's do the kinetic energy operator on the result of when we do the momentum operator on a particular function psi does that equal uh, the result we get when we first do the kinetic energy operator on that function and then whatever we get there we then do the momentum operator in the x direction So let's see if that's true well let's put in what these uh, operators are the kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared or 2m second derivative with respect to x uh, minus i h bar, we're doing now this, the first derivative with respect to x, and we're operating that on some function psi. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we get here. Uh, i h bar is a constant, so we can pull that out. So this is minus h bar squared over 2m minus i h bar and now we are uh, left with the second derivative and then the first derivative. That's the same thing as taking the third derivative. Okay, and then we just rearrange these things. All right, so the third derivative, we can rewrite that. As um, the uh, let's see, what do we want? We want the first derivative operating on the second derivative operating on psi. All right, so we can do that. And then since um, i h bar, or minus i h bar and minus h bar squared over 2 number constants, we could rearrange those. So this is just minus i h bar first derivative with respect to x. And then here we have, we're going to take this inside here, minus h bar squared over 2m 
second derivative with respect to x squared of psi. And this is just momentum operator, px. This is just the kinetic energy operator in the x direction operating on psi. So what we've shown is that if you start first with the momentum operator and then with the kinetic energy operator, you get the same thing as if you started with the kinetic energy operator and then with the momentum operator. So we would say that uh, kinetic energy and momentum in the x direction, they commute. And we write that with brackets ke comma px bracket equal zero. However, let's look at this case. The operators for uh, px, momentum in the x direction, and the actual distance x do not commute. Let's show, uh, let's show that. Okay, so we want, uh, let's write uh, px, and then we have the uh, position operator, and we're going to operate that on a function psi. Let's write what that is. That's uh, minus i h bar derivative respect to x. The position operator is just multiply by x times psi. All right. Now we run into a difficulty here. Both x and psi are functions of x, so we have to say take fir the first th um, quantity x times the derivative of the second plus the second quantity times the derivative of the first dx by uh, dx. Okay, so that's just equal to minus i h bar um, x d psi dx plus psi. Now we want to know if this is equal to what we did here, we just want to switch here, so momentum first, then position. So is that equal to the uh, position operator uh, operating on the result of the momentum operator operating on psi? Well, if we just put in again what those are, x, this is minus i h bar d by dx of psi. We're operating on psi here, and we we can rearrange this. We just put the x inside. This is minus i h bar x dx, or sorry, s d psi dx. So, is this equal to that? The answer is no, it's not you have this extra term here, psi, that you don't have here. So in fact, if you operate first with x and then with px, you'll get a different result than if you operate first with px and then with x. So you would say that the two operators here do not commute. You, you get a difference depending on what order you do the uh, d uh, <coughs> operations, and th therefore px and x do not commute. So why are these things important? Why is it important to determine whether two operators in quantum mechanics commute? Well, one of the reasons is operators that, have, that do commute have the same set of eigenfunctions. So for example, we just showed that the kinetic energy operator in one dimension and the momentum operator in the same dimension, they commute. Therefore, if you find the eigenfunctions of the kinetic energy operator, those are the same eigenfunctions that you will find for the momentum in the x direction. Psi n will be the same. So that's handy to know. You do uh, solve one problem uh, with some one operator and you get the eigenfunctions and then figure out whether another operator commutes with that and if it does, then you have the eigenfunctions already. But the more important or more interesting perhaps um, idea with commutation of operators. Two observables whose operators do not commute cannot be measured simultaneously with infinite precision. That is, the, that's why we're interested in 
commutation of operators. You take two operators, if they don't commute, you cannot measure the observables corresponding to those operators simultaneously with infinite precision. This you might recognize as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. For example, x and px do not commute. Therefore, the uh, precision with which you measure x and the precision with which you measure momentum in the x direction, uh, the product of those cannot be zero. You cannot measure those with uh, infinite precision. In other words, the uh, error in determining x and p of x cannot both simultaneously be zero. In fact, the precision with which you measure those two things has to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. So, take two operators, see if they commute. If they do, then you can measure each one simultaneously with infinite precision. If they don't commute, then you cannot measure them simultaneously with infinite precision.